Nimele Pate, ce pedeni, iet pede de sancti. Amen. So our uh, saint for today is Saint Clare of Assisi, uh, the um, founder of the um, order, second order of the Franciscans, uh, the poor Clares, as they became to be known. So she was the companion of Saint Francis of Assisi, and uh, let's see, born in 1194, I think that's um, maybe a few years later than Saint Francis, 10 or so years. Uh, she was born to, uh, she was the daughter of a noble family, much like St. Francis himself. He was born in, into nobility. Uh, she was a very, very pious young girl, and she followed the good example of her mother. Her mother was, was, would go on pilgrimages to Rome, Compostela, um, Jerusalem, and so on. Uh, Claire herself would help her mother distribute alms to poor persons, so she had a very good um, charitable upbringing. And one day she heard St. Francis preaching a sermon and resolved to spend her life in the service of God. Uh, at 15 years old, she was offered a good marriage, but uh, she refused, uh, um, a vowing, a vowing that her only spouse would be Christ. Uh, soon after, uh, when she was 18 years old, she sneaked out in the middle of the night on Palm Sunday, and she had been corresponding with St. Francis uh, secretly, and um, she met him at a nearby chapel, and she traded her fine clothing for a coarse brown habit and cut off her long, beautiful hair as a sign of fidelity to God. So this, this young girl runs off with a monk, but for all the right reasons, right? So uh, she herself uh, just wants to give herself totally to God, and um, St. Francis helps her to enter a Benedictine convent, um, although she wasn't gonna stay there very long. But that was, that was a good place for her and in the beginning as she wanted to, to embark on the um, uh, religious life. Well, of course, uh, her family found out and her father was furious and he came straight to the convent, uh, but she fled into the chapel and there clung to the altar. And she took off her, um, 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 I think wimple is what they call that, and showed her that she had cut off her hair and there she told him she would have no husband but Christ. And her father, um, although unhappy, allowed her to remain there at the Benedictine convent. Uh, so shortly after, St. Francis asked her if she would uh, start uh, an order for women of the Franciscans, and she did, and she called it the Poor Ladies at first. Um, and it was after her death, uh, it was unanimous, they all call it the Poor Clares. So this little community of women started out uh, just outside of Assisi, uh, near the chapel of San Damiano, where St. Francis himself had first established his community. And she would remain there for the rest of her life. Uh, now at first, her order of women was directed by St. Francis himself, and he wrote uh, an original rule for the nuns. But eventually he saw the capacity, the, the ability of St. Clair, and so he turned over the order to her. And she, uh, of course, proved herself to be a very good leader and modeled the life of the nuns after the example of St. Francis. So uh, the sisters went barefoot, they slept on the ground, and they ate no meat. Uh, they owned nothing and relied on divine providence for their needs from day to day. Uh, as soon as one day was finished, well, thanks be to God, would we, have, would we be able to eat tomorrow? Who knows? God is going to have to provide. So a very uh, radical way of living uh, the gospel, um, uh, uh, poverty of the gospel. Uh, however, St. Clair was not only pious and holy, but she was also practical. And that's always a hallmark of the saints. They are not these, these impractical, um, uh, lost in space mystics, we could say. Yes, they may have vision, visions and ecstasies, but they keep their feet very much on the ground. So she eventually uh, persuaded, she has to persuade her sisters to moderate their physical austerities, telling them our bodies are not made of brass. Uh, she would, however, she, she uh, kept up the financial austerities and insisted that they own nothing and rely on almsgiving day to day. At some point, some 20 or so years after the founding of the order, um, the Pope himself asked St. Clair to relax their rule of poverty, uh, to which St. Clair replied, I must be absolved from my sins, but I do not wish to be absolved of my obligation to follow Jesus Christ. 
Uh, so for 40 years, she served as the superior of her order, leading her nuns in piety and self-sacrifice, and almost 30 of those years she spent in uh, great illness herself. Uh, she wanted to, she served others even when she was sick herself. She had the other nuns prop her up in bed when she was too sick to rise, and then she would work uh, with her hands. Um, uh, when, she, when she first began the order, she imitated St. Francis's virtues and his way of life so much that uh, she was sometimes called um, Alter Franciscus, another Francis is what they called her. And he died much earlier than she did. He died in 1226 uh, when he was 44. And um, when he was alive, she played a significant role in encouraging and supporting him in his evangelizing efforts. The Franciscan monks would travel all over preaching and doing missions, um, but, but the nuns would stay there in San Damiano, uh, just, uh, providing that um, life of prayer, right? We, we always see that. Uh, there needs to be the interior life of prayer and the exterior life of action. And so that's very often what a second order of a, of a religious order will do, is that the men will found the preaching and the exterior apostolate, and the nuns will provide that interior uh, prayer for them. So um, uh, we, we see that here in the frame with the Franciscans. Uh, she would, um, uh, uh, she uh, of course considered him her spiritual father and took care of him in his final illness. And the, the, the two had a great friendship together. And it's not very often, you don't often see uh, male-female saint pairs together. Um, I mean, it's um, just, I guess, rare enough to find two saints at the same time. But then the, 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 the male-female relationship, uh, you know, can often go wrong. But it does happen. Uh, we have St. Clair and St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, we have John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila, great friends. And don't forget, there's St. Francis de Sales, St. Jane de Chantal and of course our Lord and Mary Magdalene. So um, it does happen, it can happen indeed. Um, uh, for personal piety, let's see, she washed the feet of her fellow sisters who went into town to beg. Um, and uh, it is said that after she returned from prayer, her face would glow uh, like an angel. Uh, her mother and two sisters would eventually end up becoming nuns in her own convent. And uh, while she herself never left, uh, bishops and cardinals would come to her for spiritual advice, right? How is that for your patriarchal, misogynistic medieval church? Um, and that's, that's the truth. That's the truth of the, um, the truth of the gospel, the truth of Christ, in that for followers of Christ, they don't care where they find Christ. They want to, f they want to be with him. And so if a cardinal or the pope finds Christ in a poor, uneducated um, girl uh, or, or, or whatever it may be, somebody in a convent, he's going to go there. It's like, th this, this is where you have Christ. He's in this person, so I'm going to go there. And they're going to listen, and they're going to take the advice. That's, that's the proof of the, uh, the truth of what the church teaches. Uh, St. Clair worked some, a number of miracles. Uh, she it says she restored the use of speech to one of the sisters in her convent. Another one she cured of deafness and uh, working various healing miracles of the sort, fevers and ulcers and so on. It says that one of St. Francis's brothers, she cured of a raging madness. Uh, once there was a jug of oil that had run dry, she washed it and found that it was full again. Another time, the entire convent of 50 sisters had nothing to eat except a half a loaf of bread. And after her prayers, uh, it was multiplied and fed everyone. Uh, probably the most dramatic incident is at one point, uh, Muslims, invading Muslims, had landed in Italy, once again, and were threatening to attack the town of Assisi and the convent. And so you can imagine the terror of the sisters at the thought of this invading army. Uh, St. Clair had no recourse other than to God. So she had their, their chaplain there take the Blessed Sacrament and placed it on top of the convent walls. And St. Clair prayed, O Lord, deliver not unto beasts the souls of them that praise thee, but preserve thy handmaids whom thou hast redeemed by thy most precious blood. Uh, and after this prayer, inexplicably, uh, the army of Muslims fled both the convent and the city. It's just simply left. Um, so she would, as I mentioned, continue in this way for 40 years as the superior of the order. And uh, in the year 1153, uh, she took uh, ill and began to be, become sicker and sicker. And um, in her last illness, she was able to attend mass uh, because God granted her a vision 
of mass on the wall. She saw it there uh, in, her, um, in her cell. She was able to see that vision of mass. Uh, for which reason, she is considered the patron saint of television. Uh, so she finally died at, at, at 59 years of age in 1153, and her last words were, Blessed be you, O God, for having created me. Uh, people may not know this, but um, we have um, many um, or several uh, um, relics or the legacy of St. Clair. Uh, probably uh, people in California uh, don't realize that uh, Santa Clara, of course, is named after her. And people know that the, uh, the ships of Christopher Columbus, uh, the Nina, the ship he named, uh, Nina is little girl, but that stood for St. Clair. That was the, the name of one of Christopher Columbus's uh, ships. Um, so it's important that we, we know the uh, different religious orders. We're very familiar with the Carmelite order, uh, but we should be familiar with the Franciscans as well. I mean, all of them, Dominicans and, and, and Carthusians and so on, because every religious order has something they can teach us. There, there is an aspect of the imitation of Christ, an aspect of the spiritual life each order is supposed to emphasize. And so, of course, with, with the Carmelites, as we know, the emphasis is on retreat from the world and prayer and uh, a solitude and kind of like the, 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 this life is a desert um, after imitation of our, our, the holy founder, St. Elijah. Uh, we don't look to this world for happiness, but to the next. But what do we learn from the Franciscans, right? What, do, what can we learn from St. Clair and St. Francis of Assisi? Uh, we learn radical poverty in that we don't know what we may have from one day to the next. And this was, uh, I think I gave this sermon two years ago, and uh, this is at the height of the COVID madness, and, and, and bishops were shutting down churches, and people couldn't get the sacraments. And, and the point is, shouldn't we be like the Franciscans? Shouldn't we trust that God is not going to let us starve? Can't we have that Franciscan attitude, which simply relies day to day on our daily bread or on our spiritual bread? Can we not trust God like, like St. Clair did, that, that, that um, from one moment to the next, God knows what we need? And if we feel the pangs of hunger, physically or spiritually, God is not ignorant of that. Can we not resolve to give up and just be resigned to whatever happens in life uh, uh, from, from day to day? Uh, we can, and we, we need to. We need to imitate St. Clair in that Franciscan spirituality of poverty. And so I would say that is something that we, we should reflect well upon uh, in, in every circumstance. Uh, we never have to fear um, starvation, for if, if the body starves, uh, the soul can be rich in grace. Uh, that, that is the freedom that, that Christ brings, the freedom of, of, of faith, right? Uh, to those who believe, they have the power to become sons of God. Faith is a power in that if the body starves, uh, the soul doesn't care. That's fine. Plenty of saints starved. Uh, plenty of saints voluntarily, you know, would, would die because they themselves would took on such great austerities. That's what, what, what our faith does for us. It gives us the power to ignore anything that may happen in this life for the sake of the next. And even spiritual poverty, the sacraments are withheld. You know, we, we don't have access to the sacraments. Okay, blessed be God. He himself will sustain me, right? Bringing bread from heaven, even as he brought, like, he had a, a raven bring uh, bread to Elijah and so many, so many people. God can give grace however he wills. If I'm deprived of, of, of the sacraments, I'll just beg God to give me what I need extra sacramentally. That, that is possible. Uh, so w whatever happens, uh, have that spirit of poverty, have the spirit of St. Clair and St. Francis. Uh, uh, God, as I, as I said, is not ignorant of what we need. He will always provide for us in, in every circumstance. Uh, let us keep that in mind and ask St. Clair for her intercession. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.